Um, okay, so the aim of this webinar is to become familiar with the structure of OMER, OMER Act and what OMER Act is about. Now, those of you who've been to an OMER Act conference before, a lot of this you'll understand, uh, but you'll also see the program, which, which is this 2018 program, which hopefully is new to you. You'll also understand um, how our participation is, as patients uh, is spread throughout the conference. So we're not just limited to certain aspects of a, an OMRAC conference, but we have participation in every single session. I'll talk a, briefly about some of the main sessions and uh, just make sure that you all understand that we are very essential as patient research partners. So the content is that we will talk about OMER Act as a structure, the patient daily meetings, which are important, what is a special interest group and or a workshop. Martin will then talk about the OMER Act consensus process, which will be running through the whole of uh, the, the meeting this year. Talk briefly about the voting and mention the glossary. So OMER Act is made up of approximately 200 people from around the world, 10% of whom are us as patients. So we have about 20 pa patients at every OMER Act conference. The other uh, delegates are clinical researchers, such as Alexa, who's on at the moment, methodologists, scientists, fellows. We have some representation from pharmaceutical companies, but they are limited to the people who are researchers. And then there are also the um, government regula regulators, such as the FDA in America and the European Medical Association. Those of you, I think it's mainly uh, just one, who haven't been to an OMRAC conference before, it's very different. If you've been to the likes of the ACR or the EULA conference, an OMRAC conference is quite different. At the main uh, rheumatology conferences, they are mostly information giving. So you go into a session, you hear the results of final research, um, and then you can learn about what that research has um, brought to patient treatments. But at OMER Act, um, the researchers present their ongoing research. It's about us as delegates being a part of their ongoing research. We consider and review what they've said in the plenary, and then uh, hopefully towards the end of the conference, we will all together come to some sort of consensus based on what they have presented to us. So here's the provisional programme. Hopefully this is the final programme, um, but until we get there, I would never say final. So hopefully it is the final programme. For those who, again, who haven't been, it is a very, very full uh, five days. We are always very busy, every one of us. So every patient research partner is involved in all the, <coughs> all the sessions, but we are, uh, there are sort of given a little bit of time off, not a lot, compared to the other um, delegates. It is exhausting but it's definitely inspiring. And those of us who've been um, just really get a lot out of it. It's very motivating, even though it's very tiring. As delegates, we all commit to participating in all of the sessions that we are asked to attend. And I hope that's okay, even though it'll be quite a lot. So the, the sessions are daily patient sessions, which I'll talk about. Uh, also the special interest groups, workshops and at the end of the week is the voting. So these are the daily patient sessions. There are six of them all together spread over the week. Um, these are the consensus and methodology and then we have uh, the next ones are the workshops in blue and in lighter blue we have the special interest groups. So I'll go into those in more detail. The patient research partners are part of a group. You've got the, the fellows who are one group, patient research partners are another group. And we have sessions on our own apart from all of the other 
um, main meetings. We have a personalised programme, which gives you a slightly reduced burden on the main programme, and the daily patient sessions, which give information about mostly the workshops that are coming up. It's also a good time to have feedback, to chat, and if necessary, to have a bit of debrief. So if you found something particularly difficult in a session, then this is a good time to go through it and not to carry it over and not to be burdened by it. We also have a patient glossary, um, which uh, is on the OMRACT website. And one thing you'll find that happens whilst you're at OMRACT is that the working group you work with will often say, oh, we'll have a separate meeting apart from everything else. Can we all meet at this time? Now, if that happens, which it probably will, um, try and let your work group know that if it's at the same time as one of the daily patient sessions, <clears throat> then the daily patient sessions take priority. And the only time that might be um, relaxed is if you have a workshop that you are heavily involved in the next day, and that is the only time that your working group can gather in which case um, let the people who are running the daily patient session know that you can't be there and because it's, it, it's uh, to help formulate your or put the final touches to your workshop. So these are, as I say, the patient daily sessions. A special interest group. There are... Um, four lots of special interest groups. So there are 16 all together. They are held concurrently, uh, which means that there are four all held at the same time, unlike other sessions in OMER Act. <clears throat> and they're small group sessions, so that the delegates are divided up into smaller groups. Um, how you get a small a special interest group at OMER Act is that a group of people who are interested in a particular topic approach the OMER Act executive and ask if they can have a special interest group at the next OMER Act conference. There's always lots of people who want to have a special interest group, so the executive have to be a bit careful and make sure that the ones who are proposing it have got sufficient work under their belt in order to justify taking up time on the next conference. And the aim of the special interest group <clears throat> is to put in enough work and get enough agreement over time, it might take one or more special interest groups over a number of conferences, to be able to go forward to an OMER Act workshop. And we'll talk about the workshops next. There are four workshops. Workshops are held over a number of hours. Um, they are not held at the same time as any other conference because they, uh, the intention is that all, all the delegates go to the workshop, so they're quite important. Again, you'll be, a, you'll be assigned to three out of these four, and you'll get those details on your personalised programme. Any questions so far? Okay. So the workshop is um, a bigger session than a special interest group. Special interest group is an hour and a half, but the workshop is several hours. Everybody participates. Um, the workshops quite often are looking at something called core outcome sets, and hopefully you'll know what those are now. Uh, if not, you can look on the OMAP glossary on the website. And the aim is to reach consensus um, by the end of the week, uh, either on the core outcome set or whatever else is the topic, but usually it's a core outcome set. The workshop is um, broken up. It starts off with a plenary attended by everybody. And then as patients, we are assigned to a specific breakout group. So the intention is that every breakout group has patient representation and they are able then to get the patient perspective. And we're aware that, um, you know, if you're going to a juvenile idiopathic arthritis workshop and you don't have juvenile idiopathic arthritis, then you might think, well, I've got nothing to add. But just your experience as a patient and you can hear the evidence in the plenary, 
you've got the same kind of input then as everybody else because there'll be a lot of people there who are researchers whose work um, is not in juvenile idiopathic arthritis but they listen to the same evidence as you listen to and we all discuss it in the breakout, breakout groups. The breakout groups will have a particular question or a topic to discuss so for example one thing that they might discuss is should the domain of sleep be in an inner core of a corset um, to measure in a cl clinical trial? Is it as important as pain, which normally is, would be in, in the inner core? If not, um, should it just be in the next core, which is the middle core? So it's not as important to measure in every trial, but it should be considered to be um, measured in some trials. And uh, that's the kind of thing that you might be asked to consider in your breakout group. But there'll be all sorts to, to look at. At the end of it, uh, the breakout groups, people, they all get back together again. And the reports from every breakout group are presented. And at the end of the week, some level of closure is expected to be um, reached so that you might finalise an entire agenda or decide that that core set that you've all decided upon or discussed during the week is OK and you all vote to say, yes, that core set is fine. It'll all become clearer when you get there. So I'll hand over now to Martin, who's going to go through the consensus with us. Yeah, thank you, Pam. Um, OMREC is always uh, described as a data-driven iterative consensus process and consensus is an uh, important element in the way that OMREC develops core sets. Um, it, it means actually that we can not only rely on the data that working groups uh, collect and although the data are important, they are not self-explanatory. Um, they need to be interpreted. And not all data have the same value. So it is still um, a lot of the work and the outcomes, a lot depends on the perspective and opinions of the participants in OMRECT. And a fourth characteristic of OMRECT is that it always strives for a multi-stakeholder approach, which actually means that it will bring together as many relevant stakeholders um, representing uh, the same number of different perspectives. And the wish is really that a core outcome set for clinical trials um, is representative for the perspective of all the relevant um, stakeholders. So that's the reason um, that we have an emphasis on consensus. This is something we already do for quite some years, um, but at this conference there will be a kind of main theme around the topic of consensus and there were two reasons for doing that. The first reason was that in specifically last year, some participants um, were not happy, um, not always happy with the way that the breakout sessions, uh, which are the core of the OMREC conference, how they were moderated. It is important that moderation of the breakouts uh, happens neutral, which means that there is a facilitator who is reluctant in giving his or her own perspective or opinion and who not only keeps the time but also ensures that all stakeholders around the table, so all the participants, have a chance to provide input and express their opinions um, on the matter that's on the table. Um, sometimes we didn't do a good job at the last conference and we have uh, concluded 
that there is a need to improve on this. So that was one reason. The other one is that there are a lot of different methods for achieving consensus. Um, and what we see is that not all groups um, are knowledgeable or apply different methods in different ways. And what we would like to do is to get some um, or give some more guidance in the use of different consensus methods and one in particular which is called the Delphi method. So for these reasons um, we have uh, consensus uh, meetings so you can indeed go to the next uh, slide mm -hmm. which is now the previous slide <laughs> um, and may and the previous of this one, which is the, uh, yeah. So here you see we will have one, one and a half hour meeting on the uh, Tuesday. This will be the start of the OMRECT conference. And then the second one, which is the night, will be on the Friday morning, where we will um, have a kind of wrap up and some additional information about uh, consensus. Uh, we are still working on the exact content of these two sessions. Um, in addition of this, we will have also um, a specific training for a group of what we have called expert facilitators. And there has been a nomination process and a recruitment process of a core group of expert facilitators. And this is currently also ongoing. So working groups are no longer responsible for organizing their own facilitation of the breakouts, which also free them from timekeeping, steering the breakouts, and they can actively participate in the breakouts. Um, and then the next one, um, we will pay more attention to uh, one of the key methods that OMRECT, OMREC uses for consensus building, which is the Delphi process. Um, I think most of you are familiar with the method of uh, having a Delphi process, but there are quite some um, items, questions where we are not certain which has to do with the number uh, of participants that you need that you need or the number of items that can go into a survey. Here you see an example of a first round Delphi. You see the domains in the left column categorized in three different groups and all participants are asked to rate them on um, a scale between one, which would mean not at all important, to nine, which means um, very critical important. Um, depending on the outcomes of the first round, there will be uh, less uh, items because some will have consensus if 70% has a majority and then uh, they will be included in the core set. If there is a large majority that says it is not an, um, a priority or it is not important, they will be excluded. If it's in the middle, so uh, let's say between 30 and 75 or 70 percent, then they will go to the next round. Normally a Delphi has two and most of the time uh, three rounds and then you will have an acceptable number of uh, domains that will be considered as critically important and that the working group might decide 
to bring to OMRECT and ask for the OMRECT community whether they agree or not. I think this is um, most what I would like to say about the Delphi process. Um, sometimes now, and that, that we see more and more, is that working groups also organized small consensus meeting with physicians and patients. And they follow another method for consensus building, which is called the nominal group technique. And this is a very structured approach where there are two rounds. First, a round where everybody can say um, what their priorities are. They will be written down on, on um, a paper or on a screen. And in a second round, all participants will be asked to vote on the all the items that has been uh, brought forward in the first round. So it might be a method to further reduce the number of items after having done a Delphi. Um, this is not often done, um, but at least the PSA group um, at the last OMRAC presented data from both a Delphi and a consensus meeting. Thank, Thank you, Pam. Thanks. And I would like to hand over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the one of the benefits of um, Delphi, do you agree, is that it's anonymous, so nobody knows how you have ranked uh, your your items. So the next uh, and final um, part of OMRACT and very important part of OMRACT is the voting. And every one of us has our own digital voting pad. We're told how to use them. Everybody uh, always kind of gets a little bit confused. So we have a couple of practice sessions. <laughs> but um, stick to your voting pad uh, because it, it is, it's, it's assigned to you. And if somebody uses it instead of you, then they'll be voting on, behalf, on your behalf. And as we're only 20 patients, uh, we, we do need to make sure the, the patient's perspective um, is heard, so you need to vote according to how you feel as a patient. Sometimes through the week, there will be some preliminary voting, uh, which um, precedes the, the main voting sessions on the last day. So always take your digital voting pad with you. But mostly it's on the Friday when we have our main voting sessions. So this year there are, there are going to be two extra voting sessions um, on the two special interest groups related to Betchets and myositis. And um, I'm finding out whether every patient needs to be at those two voting sessions or whether we can split it so that half of us are at one and half of us at, at the second one. We then have the consensus meeting um, and the, after lunch is the final plenary, which is all of the voting. And it's important that every patient attends that session um, and you'll be asked to vote on the evidence that had been presented at the previous meetings. So um, by, after that, we'll then have our final daily patient session before we have a bit of a, a fun time and it's always great for when we have the, the farewell dinner. So that'll be super. So voting sessions, very important. And we as patients, that's when our voice really counts. So finally, the OMRACT glossary. As I said, it's on the, web, it's on the website. Uh, do go to the website. Please let me know if you're not going to have your laptop or tablet with you during the conference because you'll need access to the glossary and other, and other items. This year, there's going to be a, an OMRACT app, uh, which will have all of the details on. Um, so if you're not going to have access to your laptop or the app, then please let me and or Shauna know about that, because we'll have to make sure you have a hard copy. But if possible, if you have your tablet or laptop, then we don't need to print off any, any extra hard copies. So finally, OMRACT is about developing evidence-based consensus on what we should measure and how we should measure it. As partners, 
we bring our own personal lived experiential knowledge as a resource and that's what you know we have other people have a lot of learning behind them we have a lot of living behind us we look at uh, developing out core, core outcome sets or developing core outcome measurement sets so the outcome measures is what what we should measure which areas of our symptoms our domains pain fatigue etc should be in the core outcome when we look at a clinical trial um, or how we should measure those domains when we um, so, so it's standardized whenever we look at any results from a clinical trial so finally by effectively incorporating the patient research partners perspective at all levels uh, OMRAC harnesses what we have our patient power and our lived experience to improve their research